What's up, my movers and shakers? I'm Dave. This is MS Paints. And this is 40K Scenery 101 with realistic concrete textures. Now, I'm not a huge 40k player, and by not huge, I mean I only really picked it up properly when 9th edition dropped. So to better welcome myself into this new universe of grim darkness and far futures and wars with hammers, I made myself some nifty little pieces of scatter terrain. And one day I'll be able to use them in a game when I can play with other humans again. Although not many people really wanted to play with me before the pandemic, so I mean, I don't know why. Yes? Hey there, buddy, you wanna come play against my towel? F off, Tony. Aw, oh, come on. Get out. All right, all right, all right, jeez. Anyway. I'm gonna introduce what I consider terrain making basics. Well, essentials, in fact, to be fair. Tile grout, plaster, polystyrene, foam, and foam board, and tin foil. I noticed that our friend Fella, or as the Americanskis say, Spackle, you called? Uh, absent from this list. Today we're gonna try an alternative mixture that dries about 80 times faster, actually not hyperbole. Also the word spackle is problematic in the UK. Oi, spackle. What happened? This foam packaging is from something I bought recently and I like the shape of it. Doesn't need to be that way for you. Two bricks of foam stuck together are just as good. And to make sure everyone knows this is 40k, I chose to put the Imperial Aquilas on this instead of like 500 f***ing skulls. I'm cutting my foam flush with the cardboard. I want to treat the cardboard like it's made of metal. And I want the foam to be concrete, so two separate parts. I've chosen a brand new retractable blade over my sturdy hobby knife, mostly because I'm comfortable torching this one so I can cut through the foam faster and cleaner. And since variation in scatter terrain is the spice of your 40K life, I'm gonna stick two of these together at an angle. And I'm using foam board as a base for these guys because it's light, easy to cut, and non-porous. Now the last thing I want during an MS flare-up is trying to drive a 500 watt jigsaw through some 3 mil MDF. And in the past, because I do wet work with my terrain, I've found that for a final dried result, it takes about three to four days, which in that time, if you're not in a well-ventilated room, the MDF can go moldy. And what you may not be aware of is that mold is bad. Bevel off the edges, but not entirely flat. You want some structure to stay in place to hold the ground cover later on. I'm mixing up some Mod Podge and black paint here to create a glossy seal over our foam and our cardboard. You can do this with cheap varnish too, I believe, so long as it is solvent free. Solvents from spray cans and certain glues will eat away at foam. It's not the paint itself from the spray can per se, it is the solvent element itself that does it. So you can be okay from far enough away, but rather than risking everything, it's probably worth your time just putting a protective coat on top of it. Now I mentioned not using filler or spackle. You gotta stop calling me there. Instead, we're gonna use homemade sculptor mold, which is a compound of plaster and paper pulp, essentially. I kind of course buy infinitely better stuff than what I'm making and I'll put a link down in the description to the stuff that I do recommend. The benefits of this stuff being I can mix it, sculpt it, leave it for 20 minutes and then get right back to work on it. And filler or spackle can take a lofty 24 hours to dry. 
and to decorate your scenery, dig into your bits, boxes and discarded kits and unfinished projects, whatever else you don't mind losing. And just find whatever you can, just some bits of shit to stick on there. And I'm even going to try putting a Space Marine arm on there, just as is, to see if I still feel as strongly about how bad that's going to look at the end. I'm going to use my spare foam and some garden wire clippings to make concrete blocks with rebar poking out. And even though we've protected our foam, I'll still be using hot glue on that and super glue on the plastic. Cocktail sticks always make for great improvised barricades, and in this case, they'll add to part of the storytelling, I guess. And for this narrative, I want to put across the idea that whoever was manning these fortifications got fucked up so badly that they thought, okay, next time they come back, anything will do. Sharp sticks, put them in the ground, let's go. I lost the footage of how I made this stuff, but I basically poured plaster into a baking tray and I dried it on a radiator. Once it's dry, you smash it up and you've got instant concrete, rubble and debris. Space Marine arm test time. Nope. F*** it. Job a few holes and dents in for the battle damage on the concrete. I should have done this before I sealed it, but hey ho. And onto the concrete, I'm going to present you with two methods. And the first is another thinner coat of Mod Podge. We want this stuff to go on with as little texture or brush lines as possible to make the final result smooth. Sprinkle the tile grout on and hit all the wet surfaces, but any overspill don't really matter. It can be brushed off or worked into the ground cover later on and tile grout will only adhere to those wet surfaces, so a bit of a mess isn't really an issue here. Any excess you've got, shake it back off into the bag if you can, and you don't want to get this crap anywhere else. And please guys, definitely wear a proper dust mask for this if you can, if not just a face covering, because if this crap gets in your lungs, it will f*** you up. Holy, holy. Thanks health and safety frog. Method DOS and my preferred method in this case. Spray on some cheap spray paint and cover the surfaces that you want to be concreted. And repeat the steps as before. It's basically the same, just a different kind of adhesive. And this is going to give us a much smoother finish. And brush off any excess you don't want, ideally outside or at the very least. It's time to lay on some ground cover. And we're laying down an initial base of concentrated PVA, although any kind of PVA will really do. And avoid covering any of your base tinsel or any vertical surfaces. I see a lot of terrain that uses single grade or grit, however you describe it, ground cover. And be that sand, dirt, wood chippings, flock, whatever. But ground and earth in real life is always a mixture of different grades, grits and materials. To look realistic, your ground cover should always key off real world influences. It's how the best dioramas and boards sell this effect to you. So we're starting with our larger grit stuff in this case, which is going to be some cut up sprues to emulate broken up bricks. Our next layer is a mixture of different grit sands. Modeling sand, generally doesn't cover it unless you buy various different grit sizes. Builder's sand, however, is cheap. You can buy it by the kilo, and it looks pretty much like what I'm putting down now. I then very lightly simulate soil and miscellaneous ground material with our tile grout again. This stuff is fine enough to look like dirt at 28 millimeter scale, and when wetted, will smooth out just enough to look like mud. It also helps hold everything in place when you seal it up later. Speaking of which, we are going to need to seal this down with a pre-wetter formula and some watered down PVA. 
Your pre-wetter can be dish soap and water, but I use some pretty heavily diluted isopropyl alcohol. If you go on straight to the PVA sealant, it's such a heavy liquid, it can actually just move it around your base, which is certainly what you don't want. PVA goes on to act as a bonding agent for everything, and mixed in with any tile grout you've got on the surface, this stuff is gonna go like concrete anyway. And I'd like to point out, up until this point, we're still on day one. I have avoided pretty much all drying walls. We avoided using PVA until it was absolutely necessary, but with most terrain done in this fashion, the ground cover is eventually always gonna be an impassable drying wall. But to say we got this far without a drying wall, that's pretty good. Now that we got the initial build out of the way, I need to take 30 seconds of your time to talk about the MS Paints Patreon. You can join our Patreon for as little as £3 a month, which gives you immediate access to the Discord chat and hobby group, which allows me to better support the disabled hobby community by better understanding your limitations when it comes to enjoying the hobby. With open discussions and chat in a supportive and curated environment, you can share your experiences with other community members and seek advice from others, as well as myself if you want. I only have a limited understanding of what it is like to hobby with physical limitations and for me to further give more back and curate these tutorials more, I need to understand you more. Higher tiers include rewards such as Zoom calls, hobby coaching sessions and direct messages. Ultimately I want this community to be driven by fun and positivity and good vibes and you guys can get involved as much as you want with the channel you can tell me what you like, what you don't like, what you want to see more of, what you feel is underrepresented. However, if that's something you're not too fussed about, no dramas. Just do me a favour and hit the subscribe button, would you kindly? Or at the very least drop a like and a comment just to let YouTube know that I'm trying my whittle hard out on this platform. That gets me more traffic and ultimately more opportunities to spread the good word. Cheers, back to the build. At the start of day two, I'm hitting this thing with a light coat of gloss varnish just to help further lock any stray particulates down. Then I'm priming and I'm blasting everything with a black spray paint. And from a distance above, I'm dusting the pieces with grey sear spray, but any light grey spray will do. I'm edging on some blue grey with my cheap Chinese airbrush, which promptly died minutes later. Get in the fucking bin. That airbrush, before finally giving out, was £25 and lasted a year. That's not bad. This is a rusty metal base coat with some browns and dark metallic paint mixed together. This covers all of my metal terrain tinsel. then applied in patches to my wall and a quiller using an old brush and a sponge. I do the same thing with a light blue over the top of the blue parts that I've painted to simulate light scratching. And where I want my scratches deepest, I'm gonna go in with a metallic to expose the theoretical metal underneath. And where I want my scoring deepest, Rhinox hide. It's important to note that none of the paint for applying scratches are thinned and I build these up in layers while they're all still wet. This gives me a texture that normally on models you would want to avoid, but on something as shagged and haggard and knackered as this wall, I'm all for a little bit of texture in there. Chunky. I'm simulating a graffiti artist paint roller to mark off an area where I want to do my graffiti. 
woefully ill-prepared as I was to create this next step with some Poundland markers and fine liners. It, it looks okay. Fatso is a nod to the Fisto artist from Sheffield. I saw a lot of his tags way back when I lived there. Trevor Peanut will return triumphant is something that is graffitied on the back of a false wall in my studio that, among some other graffiti, I don't know how people got into that space. I don't know why they were writing and there's no light in there to write with. Trevor Peanut creeps me out. If anyone knows what Trevor Peanut is or who he is, please let me know in the comments. And of course, Marines Out is from the iconic piece of Rogue Trader art back when Space Marines were just angry cops in armor with truncheons. The Poundland pens were an utterly tedious process, so I moved back to my brush again, and I wanted to connect this terrain to my work in progress custom Imperial Legion that I'm making. More on that later down the line when I'm gonna be breaking the law. Splash on a little extra paint here and there to get across the spirit of that custom faction. They 100% just don't give a shit what some old dead bastard sitting on a pipe organ has to say to him. Anyway, I'm gonna dry brush a lighter metallic onto all those metal parts we coated earlier. And Dollar Store Craft Paint is our weapon of choice for general terrain dry brushing. I'm testing out in my homemade dry box, which no, I am never going to stop talking about. And just hammer all this ground cover with a cream or lighter graze. Your choice. And we're going to go in with enamel washes because they dry faster, go further and have a muted tint to whatever they touch. But you can of course use your choice of acrylic washes for this step. A cotton bud with white spirit on can bring back any muted edges you want to get a pop out of. Now at this point my camera arm broke so you can join that other piece of cheap shit in the bin. Weathering powders kind of spoiled this build for me a little bit. I should really have focused on dry brushing and washing on different browns for colour. But I was running low on time and I knew this would do what I needed it to do. And it's a little too saturated compared to the rest of the colour scheme but that's okay. Once you're happy with the build that is, not life in general, I can't help you there, hit everything with a matte varnish to seal your work in place. And that's it really, 40k terrain 101 that my disabled friends can make at home completely stress free. Sure there's so much more you can do in context of this universe, but I'm hoping a few of you will see how easy it is with these basic pieces to make something more interesting for yourself and hopefully better than what I've made. If you like my approach, don't forget to check out the rest of the channel and I will see you next time. Cheers, I'm out of here.